Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel with my next movie review, of course the one that I have been waiting for for quite some time to review, and of course that is Furiosa, a Mad Max saga directed by George Miller, starring Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Burke, and Lila Brown, and of course this follows the character of Furiosa, who was played by Charlie Theron in Mad Max Fury Road from 2015, and it's essentially her backstory telling how she got to that point in Fury Road and it's a very revenge fueled tale that you know a lot of people have been looking forward to especially because we know what George Miller did with Mad Max Fury Road which many consider to be one of the greatest action films of all time now I will certainly say this about Mad Max Fury Road I think a couple of the action sequences in that film are some of the greatest in all of cinema, especially the final one has to be probably top five action sequences of all time. Now, I love the film, but my problems with it, I'm not really a fan of the fact that it is kind of hollow in regards to story uh, building and, and character development. Of course, you get a lot of great small moments between characters in that movie, which make me love it even more that they, you know, have those moments to sit down and breathe with the situation that's happening at hand. But I do feel the lack of story-driven elements in that film does put it just a notch below uh, how everyone else feels about it, which is still to say that it is like one of the greatest achievements in action uh, filmmaking in, in the past decade. So naturally, I was going into Furiosa thinking, okay, like this is a revenge tale, uh, it's going to be more character driven, and it was certainly one where I'm like, this is probably, you know, could be just as good as Fury Road. And I will say right off the bat, it's not. But even so, I still think that this is a really, really damn good revenge film. And I will also say about, I'd say almost the first hour in this movie is the best Mad Max movie I have ever seen. And I just think the world building yet again from Miller is unbelievable. The direction here is just astonishing, uh, visually speaking, what he's able to do and create this very desolate sort of wasteland and, and how all the moving threads and all the different pieces and the politics going on within all these different citadels. It's really, really astounding work still to this day. I mean, this guy's almost 80 years old and he hasn't lost the juice yet. He's still making insanely high concept movies with insanely high budgets and some insane uh, stunt work to behold, which obviously is very much a big proponent of this film. And I think that while, you know, there aren't as many sequences that are as riveting or awe-inspiring as the ones in Fury Road, I still think that there is so much to love, especially one action sequence in the middle on one of the oil rigs is unbelievable. I think really rivals anything in Fury Road, if I'm being quite honest. And of course the cast here is really, really phenomenal as well. Alana Brown, who plays the young Furiosa, is really really great for the first hour or so that she's in the movie and definitely you can see the lineage uh, between her and Anya Taylor-Joy's Furiosa and also Anya Taylor-Joy going to Charlie Theron and of course we got to talk about Anya Taylor-Joy is absolutely great in this you know I think she definitely is channeling a lot of what Charlie Theron brought to the table in the uh, last movie but she's doing everything with her eyes, and what a magnificent pair of eyes she has. I mean, that's one thing you can say about uh, Anya Taylor-Joy that leaps out to you immediately. And I think that adds so much to her performance, because she has to emote so much by saying so little. Uh, not much dialogue for her in this movie. I'm sure you've heard people say this before, and of course there's been reports about how she felt very lonely on set, especially because her character is so isolated uh, from a lot of other people in this narrative. And I really, really love her take on the character of Furiosa. And of course, there's so many other great performances to be had. Of course, Tom Burke is Praetorian Jack, really is basically Mad Max, <laughs> yeah. but he is so cool in this movie, and there's a deep history to him that isn't really quite dived into, but you really 
uh, understand that there's something more to his character uh, than just this guy who kind of like helps her out and is, is sort of a mentor to her. It's it's really a beautiful the relationship they have in the movie, albeit it is a bit underdeveloped. But I think the true standout in this film above all else is Chris Hemsworth as Dementus here, who's just absolutely off the hook over the top in the best way possible, just having the time of his life. And honestly, I think by the end of this film, this is some of the best acting I've ever seen from uh, Chris Hemsworth, especially in the final act. There's this monologue that he gives, which is just incredible. And, and I really think that Chris Hemsworth is such a capable actor who perhaps is a bit underrated when it comes down to it. And I really hope that he gets a chance to truly shine in a role that could land him perhaps an Oscar nomination sometime in the near future, because I definitely think it's in him. And I think this performance is one step closer to that. Really, really love what he does with Dementis in there. And even though you're supposed to be very, um, you know, spiteful towards this character, he just imbues such a charm and charisma to it that you can't help but like watching him on screen despite all these horrible things that he's done and I really love his work in this film and I really love a lot of people's work in this movie uh, the guy who they got to play a Morton Joe was quite good as well I didn't even hardly notice the difference so I really do appreciate uh, all the work that went in from the cast and the crew here. Speaking of which, the cinematography from Simon Duggan here is absolutely stunning. I really hope that this does get a Best Cinematography nomination at next year's Oscars because the way it captures the desert, the framing of so many shots in this movie is yet again textbook example of great cinematography. I think one of the best shot movies of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets a cinematography nomination as well as many other uh, texts come at the upcoming Oscar like uh, for instance film editing could happen but I'll get into that why I don't think that might. Um, visual effects, costume design, best costume design I've seen all year. Uh, makeup and hairstyling definitely the best I've seen all year and this is a, a, a field that includes Dune Part 2 as well so that's really saying a lot and I think this all of this really brings together this very vibrant and creative and wacky world that George Miller brings to life in these movies more specifically the last two because it is just unbelievable the level of specificity and craft that goes into just that, but it makes the world feel so much more alive. And there's like these very interesting character designs that I'll never forget because they add so much character within the frame itself and the world that's unfolding right in front of you. So I really think that those are a few nominations, though I will say with visual effects, this is not as practical as Mad Max Fury Road and it is very obviously so, which is a bit unfortunate because I really do think you can notice some of the visuals here. It isn't a complete turnoff or anything like that, but it definitely brings it a step down just a little bit from Fury Road considering how uh, seamless a lot of the visual effects in that movie were. But I still think it deserves a Best Visual Effects uh, nomination nonetheless. I can definitely see this getting sound as well. The sound design is insane here, especially the way they cut between the revving of engines, uh, the way they mix all the sounds that are taking place on screen. I mean, it's to be expected. It's Mad Max. And I mean, the last movie won six Oscars, so... I really do think a lot of the technical stuff is going to go the distance when it comes to the awards and maybe even win a couple. But, you know, it's very early to say for sure, but I think some things are guaranteed. Is this going to get picture and director? No, probably not. This isn't quite as a big of an achievement as Mad Max Fury Road was, right? So I can completely understand why this will be left out. And for a story that is very uh, much a revenge-driven tale, I do feel like the movie kind of halts to a grinding stop at a lot of points and the pacing really suffers because of it. I get that it is a bit more perhaps cerebral in some instances and I do love some of the moments here, especially in the first hour, the way they set this movie up, but it feels like considering how epic this scale is of this film. I do feel like within that time, when it does slow down, I don't think they get enough deep into the character to really be able to uh, draw me in as much as I would have liked. And so, 
I think there's certain points of the movie it just kind of loses momentum and that is my biggest issue because this is easily the second best Mad Max movie. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the other ones though I do enjoy them uh, of course to some degree. I, I do like all the films but this is far and away the second best movie and even that falls a little bit short of the mark because Fury Road was such a high point to kind of stick and so to recapture that again it wasn't going to quite make it there but I still think that there's so much in this movie that makes up for that. Um, especially the way this film builds by the end. There's a lot to appreciate and admire here. Go see this in IMAX. I saw an IMAX. This is one of those movies you have to see on the biggest screen possible, especially to take in the indelible cinematography, which I really think will, by the end of the year, stand as one of the best. And so, Furiosa, on that note, is going to get an 8 out of 10 from me. I really, really enjoyed this film, and I think for anyone who loves the Mad Max movies, you will too. So definitely go out and see it as soon as you can. This is going to be one that you don't want to miss. Probably the first big blockbuster uh, besides Fall Guy, uh, but I think that this is really the one to kick off the summer movie season in the way that we know it. Of course, one of my most anticipated films of the year glad to see it it paid off in some regard even if it isn't going to be uh, a top 10 contender of the year for me I still really really respect and love what George Miller is doing in general and I can't wait to see if he gets to make another uh, Mad Max movie with Tom Hardy because you know that could be uh, another classic in in the book of the action genre and I think that this one comes quite close uh, even if it slightly misses the mark. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about Furiosa Mad Max Saga down in the comments below. Do you think this is just as good as Fury Road? And if not, do you still love this film? Would love to hear what you think about that. And of course, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Going to be bringing you more reviews very, very soon. Still have to get to uh, Billie Eilish's Hit Me Hard and Soft, which I am going to do as my next review in the On Wax uh, review series. So be expecting that within the next day or so. I'm definitely going to try to be more diligent on getting that out to you. And until the next video, I will talk to you guys soon and have a good one.